Hello, it's Becky Raisler. I have Becky's Junk Journals on YouTube. On Instagram, I'm now um, Becky's Journals, and on Facebook, you can find me at Rebecca Raisler. <coughs> Excuse me. Today, I'm going to go through really quickly how I make focal points. Now, all these little focal points will be used uh, when I'm making collages or when I'm making clusters sorry, like that, that is a, well, a little cluster I made, then I'll use this as a tech spot. And you see it's backed with uh, paper. And um, so that's some examples. Here's another example of one of these little, I call them paper stacks, these little things. Um, you can use uh, fabric to do it too. Um, but uh, uh, I usually just do the initial ones with paper since the um, photo that I'm using uh, is, is um, from a magazine or a book uh, that I've cut out. So um, there's lots of different things you can do with these as focal points. And it's really nice to have all the things ready to go when you feel creative. I do this kind of thing when I have too many scraps and not enough uh, goodies in my uh, junk journaling stash. So uh, this is something that you can make with your scraps and um, I know you all have piles of them you don't know what to do with so this is, this is my favorite way to use them up. I've been doing a series on scrap busting um, lately for the, like the last month I've been working on this project because I'm in between journals and I haven't been feeling it particularly inspired to build another journal right this second. So I'm building up my uh, embellishment stash. I'm gonna show you uh, several different ways that I make these little um, focal points. And the first one is what I call paper stacks. And all they are is my little photo. And by the way, I get these photos from gardening magazines and uh, gardening books and flower rose identification books and things you can pick up in the thrift stores. <clears throat> but all these first ones are here is my little uh, photos cut out and squared up and then I glue uh, them down to paper like this I'm gonna sneeze, I'm so sorry. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. <sighs> Allergies today. It's been very humid and lots of mold in the air. Woo! Okay, so all you do is just glue the, your little photos down like that. Uh, and I recommend anytime you're working gluing magazine pages, which are real flimsy, they're real thin. Uh, whenever you use a magazine, don't use a liquid glue because the liquid glue will show through and, it, and, and uh, if, you know, it, unless you pull it out smooth. So I use uh, Elmer's Extreme Glue Stick uh, for gluing all these magazine photos down because it's just, it really gives a smooth, nice finish. But uh, besides magazine photos, you can get illustrations uh, from books like that. Uh, you can use stamps. <clears throat> you can use uh, little quotes, your favorite quotes, and you don't. You can use a, a, the background, whatever appeals to you. Um, I often use book pages for backs of flowers. Um, this one uh, I used. Um, the scrap piece of from a magazine or a book um, but uh, whatever you have just uh, cut your photos out and then go looking for what scraps colors uh, make you make you happy and all it is is you cut out your photos you ink the edges don't forget to ink the edges before you glue everything down uh, then you cut out these just a little bit larger and you ink the edges, and then you glue it down to a slightly larger piece of paper. 
and that's all there is to it. <clears throat> Just don't forget to ink your edges on each step. So you cut out your photos, you ink, you glue it down, then you cut it out, you ink and glue it down, then you cut it out and you ink and you're done. All right. These uh, other ones that I have to show you are something that I've just tried uh, yesterday. I just started trying making these on muslin fabric. And I'm using muslin because I happen to have a whole bunch of it that's vintage muslin that I got from an old tablecloth. And I start out by um, just tearing uh, big strips of muslin just tearing, tearing strips of muslin out uh, and um, then I stamp along the strip like that and then once I've um, the ink's dried on these and I'm using Stazon which is a solvent based ink uh, I found that that was the best uh, but um, any permanent or solvent based ink uh, stamp pad would be fine. I use black because uh, any other color, you know, just didn't appeal to me because I plan on coloring all of mine uh, individually. So once I've got them, the strips all stamped out, I, I stamp about six or seven strips at a time, then I tear them apart. And then the next thing I do is I cut them down to size. And these have already, no, these have not been cut down to size. I'll trim them or cut them down to size. Um, if you're, it's easier to tear the fabric to get a straight line. If you um, have a more loosely woven fabric you're working with. Um, a lot of these were kind of, I had two different kinds of muslin. And one of them was a real tightly woven. This particular one I have right here is loosely woven. It, um, piece of muslin and it tore real easy and you get straight lines if you tear. Um, I can't cut a straight line with my scissors uh, with fabric or paper even to save my life. But uh, get them cut down to size and here's some that are down to size that I've got ready to go. And that's what they look like, just little pieces, flimsy paper flimsy fabric and then I take these and I glue paper to the backing so it's easier to work with. Uh, I like to cut small pieces of um, cardstock but any heavier paper or even a book page works. You can do it like this uh, to, and then uh, ink the edges on book pages because everybody's got book pages but I have a lot of scraps so um, I put the little cards on and it is so much easier to work when you're making your collages or uh, working on your clusters if you've got some firmness to the back of the fabric uh, it's just a lot easier to glue in there um, and hold in place or, or even sew in place and you could, if you wanted to, sew around these, uh, like this one right here. You could cut the paper bigger and sew around it if you wanted to. Um, I don't have a sewing machine, and I'm too impatient to sew. So, <laughs> um, Now that you've got it cut down to size, uh, and, um, and you've uh, glued the little backing to it, if uh, I fray the edges and uh, I fray the edges on all of it, all of them because it softens it up and it gives it much nicer look when you put it on top of another fabric and I mean another piece of paper. So you can it's it's all soft and, and pretty. So um, once I've got the little um, cards glued to the back. This is what they look like. And I've got the frayed edges. And then I will, 
I put, like lots of color. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I like a lot of color in my journals. And since I'm making these focal points, I can have a more neutral backing in my collage and then have this touch of color that really stands out. Um, so I will probably do myself a couple of bluebirds on that. And how I have decided that I like coloring um, is my favorite way. I, I tried several different ways. I got out my markers. <coughs> and I have um, a lot of uh, Posca paint markers. These are acrylic paint markers. They're wonderful and they last forever. But they're very opaque. And... Um, Here's an example of how I colored them, uh, and they were very opaque. And it's a little bright for me, and but in the right background, you know they'll be they'll be pretty. Uh, so I tried that uh, paint markers first, and then I um, started working on these butterflies. And the paint markers did not work out on the butterflies um, like they did on these flowers. So I tried something different on the butterflies. Uh, I used watercolor pencil, and I did not add any water to it. Um, on all the butterflies, I just used watercolor pencil, but I think any kind of... Um, Color pencil will work. I have Prismacolor. They are, um, and as a lifelong artist, I've been using Prismacolor pencils forever, and these are the best. They are the most uh, richly pigmented coloring pencils. They're artist quality, and uh, they're they're not very expensive. Uh, a little goes a long way, and um, that's what I used uh, for coloring the butterflies, and I like the way that turned out. I like the softer look to it. It gives it more of an aged appearance to it. But it's bright enough that it'll make a good focal point, but it has a slightly aged appearance. When I started working on these, I have this little stamp that is a bird's nest. Um, and I decided I wanted to color. And the first thing I did was I tried just gold uh, paint pen. I used gold Posca paint pen. Um, and just did this one very neutral. And then the next one I did, I added... Uh, I did the gold, and then I added some light brown, um, just scribble marks around uh, to fill that one out. And then I tried colored, and by the way, this how this is dark right here. I colored these before I glued them down, uh, but... Uh, and so when I applied the glue to the card to glue the fabric back, the, the glue seeped through. And whenever you're working with uh, paint pens, markers, uh, it's going to seep through on this fabric. So be sure you have some scrap paper or something underneath your work surface or it's going to stain uh, whatever's underneath it. And be sure to give it plenty of time to dry because it takes longer to dry on the fabric than, than it does on paper. Um, this one is metallic gold marker around the outside. And then I came in with a little brown pencil. This one is the same, but because the glue didn't bleed through as much, it's not as dark. Okay, and then when I went to go do the flowers, first thing I did was did solid color uh, marker, and it was looked too cartoonish. I, I really didn't care for that. 
So I came in on top of it and added some red colored pencil to the outlines to give it some depth. And that's better. Um, then I just, I did the same here. I uh, solid colored it with light pink and then I came in with the outlines with a colored pencil uh, around the outlines to give it more appearance of depth. This one, uh, gold colored marker, and then that is a watercolor crayon on top of this. And I didn't care for uh, the lack of control on that one, but I'm gonna use it. And this is just a uh, uh, marker on the fabric um, after the fabric has been glued down. It just lightly on the marker. If I wanted to, I could go in there and put some uh, with a little paintbrush and clear water, just dot it and it would activate all that watercolor in there and make it much brighter. But uh, this case, I decided to leave it kind of a, I want a kind of a soft look. Okie dokie. I think that's all I have to show you today. Come see me at uh, Becky's Junk Journals on YouTube, on Instagram, I'm Becky's Journals now, and on Facebook, I'm at Rebecca Raisler. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you, whenever you're working with fabric, use Fabri-Tac or some type of fabric glue, um, or it will not stay down. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.